Welcome to Electron Line. Before we go on and try to look for life in those extreme places on Earth, we need to become familiar with some of the names that we're going to encounter. And the first name we're encountering is extremophiles. Those are creatures, life forms, I should probably just call them life forms, they're very, very primitive life forms, that exist in the most extreme inhospitable conditions. So those are grouped together as what we call the extremophiles. And of course, extreme, that word in there, gives you an idea of what that is for. Then we have what we call lithophiles. Those are what we call rock lovers. Now, why they love rocks is because they're actually able to draw nutrients from rocky material, from the what we call the minerals within the rock. So they're able to use the energy available that's in their surroundings, the heat that is that comes from chemical reactions, and use that energy to get to the rocks and to break down the rocks chemically so that they can draw the nutrients from the rock. So believe it or not, some some um, some life forms actually survive by extracting their own food from rocks, if you can call it food. Halophiles are, are uh, life forms that survive in extreme salinity conditions, very high salt conditions, much higher than what we find in the oceans, and yet these life forms can exist in those kind of conditions, what would kill almost everything else. Cyanobacteria are very important on the earth. They manufacture their own food. They do what we call nitrogen fixing. In other words, they take the more or less inert nitrogen molecule that you can find in the air, and they can convert that into ammonia, into nitrates and nitrites. It's just unbelievable that it can actually take something that is unusable to anything else and convert it into a form that is actually usable by them and other life forms. Eukaryotic are single-celled organisms that have cell walls and a nucleus within the membrane. And then we have the prokaryotic, uh, which are single-celled uh, life forms without a membrane confined inside the nucleus. So where all the nuclear, the nuclear function is just distributed throughout the cell itself, but not confined within an own nucleus with, it, uh, with its own membrane. So those are the kind of life forms that we're going to encounter in the most inhospitable places on the earth. Then we're going to look a little deeper into what the structure of those life forms are and then to see if those life forms could evolve in, in regions where it's extremely inhospitable and life forms do not already exist. That's the big question of course. How did it start on the earth and can it start in other places as well? But so at least now we have some idea of the type of organisms that can live under these very extreme conditions that have these kind of properties and these kind of capabilities and let's find out where we can find these things and let's see if those things could also exist on other planets and that is the way we do it. Is there anything in the center of the earth? Like well, is there anything in the center of the earth? Probably not. The conditions there are beyond extreme. <laughs> <laughs> pressures are unbelievable and the temperatures are well beyond anything that nothing can survive under those conditions. However, part way down, how far down can we go and still find life forms? That's the interesting part. And I'll one divulge any more information than that. <laughs> Until the video. <laughs>